when you're talking about is this alienation or is this a justifiable rejection of a parent? And so if this is unjustified rejection and we're thinking it might be parental alienation, then what, what's the motive? What are we looking at? A lot of motives may include child support. They may include the ability of the alienating parent to relocate to another state. They may just be power and control issues that the alienating parent has, a desire to manipulate and to control the environment and the, the children and the other parent. But in some cases, that alienating behavior might be the result of a theological viewpoint, a, a faith element that we're not recognizing, or it may be front and center in the case. And, um, and if that's the case, it's really important that we think about what, what does it mean? Like, what are, we, what are we really dealing with here as it relates to this family? And if you're in a family of faith, maybe you and your spouse, you grew up in the same faith, you have the same common uh, viewpoints, you adhere to the same uh, dogma, you adhere to the same you know, hermeneutic and theological interpretation, and you don't have any issues as far as disagreements on, on theology. God bless you if that's the case. For many, one party grew up over here in this church. One party may have grown up over here in this faith. There are very different uh, faith elements at play. Maybe they go to church together. Maybe one goes to the synagogue. One goes uh, to a church. Maybe one doesn't go. Maybe one goes over here. Uh, maybe you've got uh, someone uh, of the Jewish faith, someone who's Catholic, and they're married. They're making it work. But then something happens that leads to a divorce. And what, you know, maybe there is something that is so uh, central to their belief structure that it starts to creep into the family law case. And that's what I want to talk about right now. Um, because I've started to see it in cases uh, as they come to us, we're starting to see where issues of faith come into play. Now, I've always recognized that there were cases that wanted to establish infidelity for religious reasons because there was there's always been an element of you know if if there is evidence of infidelity most faith groups adhere to a, 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 the idea that infidelity is a justification for divorce uh, and I don't want to get into issues of of interpretation dogma and all these things but I'm, I'm just generally speaking wanting to look at how these things impact divorce cases and custody cases as it relates to parental alienation. So if infidelity is present, then most groups will agree you have a basis for a divorce. But then you get into other issues of well, well, what if there's no what if there's no evidence of infidelity? What if there is uh, evidence of neglect? What if there's evidence of abuse? What if there's evidence that, um, you know, some other basis that maybe maybe your faith group says, yeah, you can divorce. Um, I think there's a growing consensus within a lot of faith groups. And I, I could get into this, get into the weeds on this issue. But I think that there is a cons growing consensus in a lot of groups of faith. And I'm lumping not just Judeo-Christian, not just um, I'm, I'm lumping the Jewish faith, Catholic faith, uh, Protestant faith, um, many of, of our mainline faith groups in the United States are beginning to adhere to more of an idea that you can divorce based on abuse and neglect and infidelity. So for purposes of this talk, Let's just assume that those are three areas where party can justifiably divorce their spouse within their faith group. So I want to pose a couple of hypotheses. First one, the uh, first general hypothesis would, would suggest 
that you, when two parents come from two faith backgrounds and they divorce, there's a heightened chance one parent will work to influence the children away from the other parent's theological faith, their faith. So hypothesis one, you got a married couple from two faith groups, two faith backgrounds, and they're going to get divorced. Does one parent adhere so strictly to their faith that they begin to try to manipulate the children away from the other parent for that purpose? 